Hey everybody and welcome back into Crypto Explained. Thanks so much for joining us again today. It's going to be another What Is episode where I dive into a specific crypto project and just talk specifics about how it actually works, who's behind it, and the overall future I see um, as far as, as an investment into this project for the next couple years. Today we're talking about Monero, uh, the Monero network and its native XMR token. Uh, Monero is one of those early adopters. Uh, it was founded in 2014. It was one of the earlier adopters of just the idea of an open source cryptocurrency network that's completely decentralized. So decentralization is going to be a big focus for them, um, just privacy in general. And then fungibility is another one that they definitely want to focus on. Uh, fungibility is an interesting one because actually if we go all the way back to Aristotle and his uh, principles of sound money, a fungibility is in that list and interestingly enough bitcoin isn't it, bitcoin doesn't necessarily meet this requirement uh, there are serial numbers that track every bitcoin so every bitcoin has its own um, name tag essentially so if you send a bitcoin to somebody and then they send you back a bitcoin that's a different bitcoin these two bitcoins may have a different serial number um, that is associated to them uh, XMR and Monero is different. Each XMR token is essentially interchangeable with any other uh, XMR token. And that's similar to, we talk a lot about precious metals and why that's a good investment as far as the store of value. If you have an ounce of gold, it doesn't matter where it came from, it is an ounce of gold and it's worth the exact same amount. So that's an interesting idea that they're kind of trying to edit from what Bitcoin did with their network. Um, another thing that's interesting about XMR in general is that it is so decentralized that you are actually not even able to see uh, transaction data between people. So Bitcoin is decentralized as well, of course, um, and it has an open ledger that you can just go in and check. And that's the difference is that in, in Bitcoin, you can actually you know, find someone's transaction. It's going to take a while. It's going to be like a needle in a haystack kind of thing, but it could be available for people to see. XMR pr prefers that to be all off the grid and all, you know, non-traceable. Uh, personally, I have a couple mixed feelings about this. I, I think that the overall security uh, measure and the security focus for this project is very good. Security is one of the biggest things in cryptocurrency that they're trying to do. They're trying to make it so much more secure than our credit cards, our bank accounts, all the stuff that we use today. Um, but I don't really understand why the transactions themselves have to be hidden. Um, I mean, if you think about people right now using Venmo, um, a lot of people just post the transaction that they just made. They, they might not show the amount, but they'll say, I paid whoever for bottomless brunch or whatever it is. So it seems like most people don't have a problem with actually, you know, putting those things out there. You can, you can trace the different accounts and where they came from. Um, and it's not like you can you can hack into it and uh, figure out a way to track this account and get into the account. That's not what this is. It's just it's just records. It's just data. So I don't really know if that's a necessary thing with with XMR and Monero that they changed. And actually, I mean, they've even had some problems with uh, people using this on the dark web for certain transactions that they don't want people to see. So that's kind of where I get into it. It's like if you don't want people to see your transactions and where you're sending uh, your money, what's going on? Like, why are you trying to hide that? Um, but I also think security is immensely important and one of the biggest uh, staples of what cryptocurrency is trying to achieve. Uh, so that's my thoughts on that. It, 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 it can go either way, but overall, the Monero network is so decentralized that it definitely has uh, security as one of its number one elements, and I love that. Uh, decentralization is important because a lot of the projects that come out if you look into them a little bit, and we talked about this with XRP, XRP is not decentralized. It's very, very centralized. Uh, people even argue that Ethereum in, in its core is not decentralized either because the chain, the blockchain can roll back. Um, so XMR is an uh, open source network in the same way that Bitcoin, Litecoin, Tezos, Zcash, all of those projects are as well. Um, it, it's definitely something to keep an eye on. It had a huge price movement this year. Um, hung around sixty dollars, the fifty to sixty dollar range, and it's now over a hundred dollars. So if you made a XMR investment um, earlier on in this year, you are in position to take profits now. It definitely was, uh, at least in the short term, a very good investment. 
Um, I think a lot of these things can succeed together. I think a lot of people think that if Bitcoin takes over and dominates that everything else will fall. I don't know if that's completely true. I definitely think that's true for some of the smaller, um, more niche DeFi projects. They, they might just kind of get lost in the wave. But I mean, Monero, XMR, we talked about Litecoin as well. These are networks that are just going to be around forever. And whether they're worth anything is the real discussion, but they're gonna be there. And they have these properties of sound money that they're decentralized, they're secure. Um, you're, you're able to own your money instead of having to go through a third party. It has all of those things to it. So it definitely has the potential to be, it, if you look at the entire precious metal um, industry or in, investment category, um, gold, platinum, silver, palladium, all these things people invest in, and a lot of people would say they're not interchangeable, so to speak, but it's good to have diversity in your portfolio. So if you have some gold, you might want some silver as well, just in case. Um, that could be kind of the case with Bitcoin, Litecoin, Monero, these kind of things. I just think it's very important to diversify your portfolio and XMR might not be a bad way to go. I'm not gonna specifically say that it's a, a must to invest in right now, but it's got all of those properties that we look for. And the fungibility aspect is the most interesting to me, that all of these um, XMR tokens are interchangeable um, in the same way that an ounce of gold is an ounce of gold. Um, and they don't have any of these serial numbers attached. It has the same proof of work um, element to it as well, where there's gonna be a fixed amount. So it's 18.4 million XMR tokens ever. There's about 17 million in circulation right now. And none of these were pre-mined, they were all mined during the process of XMR becoming bigger and more expansive. So I think that's interesting because proof of work has shown that um, it's just an interesting way for transactions to be verified, for blocks to be verified within the blockchain and to reward the miners um, with XMR, Litecoin, whatever it is that they're mining. Um, so they use that model and that's how they got to this point. So again, we, we talk so much about scarcity and about fixed amounts. Monero is there. Monero is there and it has a fixed amount and that can make it very valuable. So I think it's important to keep an eye on. Um, it definitely j just ticks off a lot of the boxes, um, but we're just gonna have to wait and see where certain funds go. That's the biggest thing with the crypto industry is like, it, it, the reason that the prices go up is that more circulation, or not more circulation, more money comes into it and therefore each coin that is in circulation becomes more valuable. Uh, so we just have to see what kind of money goes to Monero over Zcash or any of its other main competitors. Uh, that's going to be it for the video today. Thanks so much again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button, I would really appreciate it. It really helps me with overall exposure on YouTube. Um, liking the video doesn't hurt as well if you enjoyed it. Um, and leave a comment below if you have any questions that I didn't answer for you. I'd be happy to engage in that conversation. And uh, I've said this in a lot of videos, but I'm just trying to kind of create a community here where we can all kind of bounce ideas off of each other. So uh, don't hold anything back. If you have any questions, concerns, criticisms, please let me know in the comment section. And thanks so much for tuning in.